Rhonda Roth remembers well the night in September of 2006 that she first learned that Florida Power & Light planned to build a coal power plant in Glades County. It was a night when her passion for the natural world compelled her to action. As we were driving home from Immokalee one night and opened up the newspaper and saw Glades coal plant, some kind of proposal for a coal plant in Moorhaven, Florida. It was 45 miles from where I lived, but I knew all about the potential contamination from coal burning power plants. There was a study done in Ohio that demonstrated mercury from coal fired power plants fell out within 60 miles or 100 kilometers of the stack in general, given wind. Corkscrew Swamp Ecosystem lies within that 60 mile radius. So believe it or not, a coal plant in Moorhaven would have air deposited mercury and it would have begun the bioaccumulation process in this particular open marsh habitat. Birds played a major role in creating awareness of the bioaccumulation process of pollutants. In the 1960s and 70s, the osprey, like the bald eagle and peregrine falcon, was greatly affected by the pesticide DDT, which washed into rivers and lakes from agricultural lands. The DDT would enter the osprey's tissue via the fish and interfere with calcium production. Better than any other system on the planet, this is the place where the mercury machine happens that sends it up the food web. Roth, who holds a degree in chemistry and graduated from the Florida Master Naturalist Program, was caring for a new baby when she heard about the proposed coal plant. She immediately formed a nonprofit organization, Save It Now Glades. Save It Now Glades didn't stop it. It was a combination of a lot of organizations, state, local, and national organizations, that fundamentally opposed it. When they broke the news to the community that they were passing a resolution at the county commission level to allow power plants in what was previously considered open use agriculture, and they had not noticed this to the community before they approved it. From that moment in September 06, um, we worked constantly until June 5th, I believe it was, 07, when the Public Service Commission denied the application. Protecting wild places is vital to maintaining biodiversity and sustainability, but the aesthetic and cultural value of natural resources is also important. Rivers and lakes provide water to neighboring communities and are simultaneously woven into the tapestry of daily life. Preserving them for public use and enjoyment can take courage and determination. Lifelong activist Ellen Peterson didn't back down when one of her favorite haunts suddenly was placed off limits. Well, I always um, canoed Fish Eating Creek and it was one of my favorite camping places. And uh, one day on Fish Eating Creek, this man stepped out and he had a gun. He was packing a pistol and he said, you don't belong on this creek, you have to get off this creek. And I said, this is a Florida waterway. And he said, this is Lyxis Creek. You have to leave. So we turned around and went the other way. But then I decided, I, that's not true. You know, they can't do that. Strategically located near much of southwest Florida's vital wilderness areas, Fish Eating Creek's first known inhabitants were the Belle Glade people, who lived along its banks between 1000 and 500 BC. Eventually, much of the land surrounding the creek came to be owned by the Likes Brothers, who built an empire from the family cattle business. In 1989, the Likes Brothers closed the creek to the public. Likes put, cut down cypress trees over the creek and put up barbed wire across the creek, so we pulled the cypress trees off and we cut the barbed wire fences and several people got thrown in the pokey for doing stuff like that. And so we started having demonstrations and it, suddenly it had lasted 10 years and we won. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Department took over management of Fish Eating Creek, but it still wasn't fully opened up to the public. We had won the creek for public access and uh, the Fish and Wildlife Commission was supposed to open the creek for public access. So they did, they opened it only in the daytime. And since we were used to always camping on the creek for years and years, um, we came out and we camped. The guard came and said, you have to leave. So we said, well, we had these handcuffs and we're gonna handcuff ourselves to the trees. He said, I'm gonna call Tallahassee. And we said, go, do it. So he did, and they said, who's out there? 
So he told them who we were, and they said, just go home and go to bed. Finally, Peterson offered to run the campground concession herself. Oh, they said, well, you're too old. You can't run this campground. And I said, you just got yourself a big lawsuit. <laughs> so then they changed and they let me run the, the, what could they do, you know, I was threatening them. So they let me go and run the campground at Fish Eating Creek. More than most average citizens, public officials can be well positioned to influence and implement conservation policies. Southwest Florida has several innovative programs to protect critical water resource areas and environmentally sensitive land. Lee County Commissioner Ray Judah has been at the forefront of many of them. 2020 was actually a program that uh, was supported by the people voting to tax themselves uh, to raise money to purchase environmentally sensitive lands. And the program itself complemented another program that in fact I helped co-found called CRU, Corsica Regional Ecosystem Watershed Land Trust. Both CRU and Conservation 2020 now have since 1989 acquired over 65,000 acres of land to protect our critical water supplies and our open space and habitat for people and wildlife. Um, people are involved uh, today uh, as volunteers, um, in terms of uh, interpretative walks that they bring other people that visit this area on nature hikes to learn more about natural systems. Uh, they volunteer on the board of directors for both uh, crew and also the Conservation Land Acquisition Committee um, that help to prioritize and review uh, parcels of land that uh, the county looks to acquire. I think for those people that have a negative uh, image of environmentalists, uh, perhaps uh, a misperception of what the environmental community is really trying to achieve and it's something that we all uh, benefit from. Again, clean air and clean water, uh, a healthy, good quality of life for, for all of us to live and work and raise a family. Um, so I think once people understand that uh, development, uh, the business uh, climate is not mutually exclusive from protecting and providing responsible stewardship of our natural resources, there would be a greater understanding that we all have one common goal. Ensuring the long-term protection of the environment will require continued vigilance, perseverance, and citizen involvement. What of those who would like to be more active but aren't quite sure where to start? They can run for office themselves. Um, clearly, that.